Okay, so today I'm going to be providing my first impressions on the Solval SV4 3D printer. I got this for about $440. Um, so it's actually very easy to get the box open. All you have to do is just cut down the middle, cut these sides, cut those sides, and it opens. Now, this is a really big like thing. So this is actually a really big package right here. So if you can see, that's the packaging for the 3D printer. That's my Ender 3 over there on the floor. Giant, gigantic. And uh, I'm actually gonna change to a larger thing. So first thing you see when you open the box, is a right extruder knob adjustment guide. Not sure if this will actually be useful for it'll be good, but I'm just gonna toss it aside for now. Cause uh, only nerds fall into the rules. All right, so we have this big piece of foam. Maybe just lift off. And I guess this is a firmware guide. Uh, also, nerds read tutorials. I'm actually gonna need that later, so I probably shouldn't have thrown that. But uh, yeah, this is what I see when I open it up. First thing I'm gonna do, is take off this piece of foam, put it to the side. And I wonder what this is, probably tools. Kind of hard to get out but it's kind of heavy um so this seems to be tools power cable um screws i, I guess this is for assembly um so yeah i'm just gonna put that aside for now we're not gonna be needing that um for now um we're gonna need that later probably i'm gonna take this off oh so this actually comes with two 250 grams pools of filament. That's actually really nice um, that it comes with PLA. So we're just also gonna put that to the side. And then this is the last little compartment up here. Is this the, oh, so this is the screen. It actually comes with the touch screen. Now, if you're not actually familiar with the Solo SP4, I might put like a little graphic up there explaining all the features of this printer like breaking it down and stuff and stuff like that. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing. Something I've noticed so far is that the packaging is actually really nice. So the box is nice and easy to open. Um, there's a bunch of foam around and this looks very nicely packaged. This looks like it could not be damaged shipping. And uh, just to prove that, actually, um, this was shipped by USPS. So, um, I mean, I'm not trying to say anything about USPS, but I mean, if it survived USPS, it probably survives anything. So right here, we have two pancake servo motors. Actually, I don't know if they're full size. Let me compare it to an actual like Ender 3 servo motor. Oh wait, not servo, stepper. <laughs> okay, so this is the size of an extruder motor from the Ender 3 compared to this Z-axis motor. So they're definitely smaller motors. I don't know if they're pancake motors. I've never actually seen those in person. But uh, first thing, is that this build plate is absolutely gigantic. So this is my hand compared to the build plate. And I'll actually get a magnetic bed from the Ender 3. So this is the gantry assembly. So this is the main one, uh, I think. This is the main one. And it has auto bed leveling. I think that's a CR touch. It looks to be one. One thing I noticed is these are using brass nozzle, but it said it was an all metal hot end. I mean, that looks like a brass nozzle to me. Um, so I think the actual, yeah, I think it's like a dual gear all metal hot end, but I think they're using just brass nozzles. So you're gonna have to upgrade that if you want to use different materials. Um, there's two, which is the main thing of this printer, is that there's two. Um, this is moving in the middle. So I'm moving so smoothly, I don't know why. This one moves. Let me get this other motor out of the way. Yeah, this is the actual base of the printer. And as I said before, this build plate is absolutely gigantic. I wonder if this side's actually usable of the build plate. Is it? I don't know. I wonder if it's usable. But this is giant magnetic flex build plate. Um, it actually doesn't look like it would flex a lot, but I'm gonna take this base out. One thing I saw immediately that I really like, I think the power supply is actually built into this. It's not external like the Ender. Um, 
but this base is absolutely gigantic, bro. I was struggling. Okay, I will read the handbook now. Um, I'm not gonna read this out loud. I'm just gonna read it and then try to assemble it. So the screws that you actually use um, to put in are these screws. Um, they are the ones that come in the package. That's not. Those are the nozzle ones. Okay, so they're M5 times 70. My print just finished over there. Um, and they're really long because uh, they have to go through all the way through there. So I just use a drill with a hex 4 bit and I just drilled it in until it reached the aluminum and then I just used the wrench, the Allen wrench that they gave me and I just went like, just to tighten it up. Um, still a little bit of wiggle. I probably need to tighten them more. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to wiggle like that, uh, if I did something wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna proceed with it. I think the next step is installing the filament rollers. So I just installed the filament uh, rollers and all you have to do is just loosen these two screws and then put them in and then screw the metal away and it should go in just fine. Did that on both sides and it looks good. Thing in the package. So there was a little thing covering that. Actually missed two things. I just realized that. So these are actually the purge buckets. I was looking for these and I saw the filament run out of sensors. I'm like, that's not it. That couldn't be there, but I just realized so I missed these in the packages. Kind of hard to get out, but you can do it with one hand. So yeah, these are the film fridge pockets. All right, it's on. That's pretty cool. So one thing I've noticed is that these ribbon cables are really nice. Like all this rainbow and stuff like that is just like on the printer, right? Like like the ender over there with the display cable. It's like all nicely wrapped up. And even the installation of it is nice. Like these go out, push your ribbon cable in. I'm gonna put bigger FOV so you can see more. Put that in and it just clicks in. Like this is so nice and it just connects to everything. This is like the nicest printer I've ever had. Next is purge bucket installation. It's basically the same as the rollers, except it's actually not a purge bucket. I'm dumb. It's the, um, Film runout sensor installation, basically the same as the holders, um, except they have these wires going to them. I think you point that in like the next next step. So there's one thing that I noticed about this is you actually have to set the power supply voltage. Uh, most printers, I mean my Ender threes, I think they came preset to the country that it was shipping to. Um, this one you actually have to set it. It comes by default like 230 volts. Um, you have to stick like a tiny little flathead, I just had this little flathead ring going around, and you have to like stick it in there and flip the switch. Actually takes a considerable amount of force to flip that, but, um, that's something to keep in mind because it's kind of not really said in the manual.